Welcome. 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 To the Performer Radio Show. Each week, we interview some of the most interesting people in the fashion and entertainment industries. Fa- fa- fashion and entertainment industries. Beautiful models, singers, comedians, dancers, fashion designers, actors, beauty queens, and many more. And many more. And many more. Right here. Right here. On the Performer Radio Show. Welcome back for another edition of the Performer Radio Show on PerformerRadio.com and on DirtyWaterNews.com, our brand new partners in this venture. Uh, Amory, how you doing? Hi. Back again. Yes. Looking gorgeous as usual. Thank you much. Yes. I, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling all... Uh, what's, what's the word I'm going Underprivileged. <laughs> <laughs> you have a you have a you have a big wardrobe, don't you? <laughs> I of do. Of course, most girls do, but you have an even bigger one than most. I, I, I mean, how is that being in the public eye all the time? And do you, do you ever repeat it any gets, outfits? I don't. It gets really expensive. I was gonna say. Yeah, I, I don't. Thank God you have a good job, don't you? You know what? It's not even so much buying clothes all the time. It's how to rearrange clothes so they look different every time. If let's say you don't like, I'll never wear that same top with the same jeans and the same shoes ever again. You how know do you know, you, so how you do you know you've never done that though? I mean, do you, I know I know you, you take a lot of selfies and things like that, but um, as we as we saw last week, she had a little selfie marathon going <laughs> on. We made comment about it last week. But okay, do you keep a catalog of all your outfits so you know you're not For the repeat? most part, I remember, but honestly, Instagram helps me remember because when something is on Instagram, I'm not going to wear it again. That's Well, that's true. I suppose social media, you can like, what did I yeah, wear that night? Terrible. Let me go look at my face. Facebook, let me go on my Instagram or Twitter. No, honestly, sometimes, which is this is gonna be really pathetic, guys. This is can I, I can I get a one get out of jail free card for being pathetic? But if one night I go out or do something and it's like really dead and I want to wear the outfit again, I just won't post pictures, won't do it. Ah, so you get to repeat the outfit. Exactly. Oh, that's smart. <laughs> In the mind of a fashionista mm-hmm. type And this is girl. not just me. This is a lot of girls. Well, how, how many girls do you think don't know that? There's probably a lot of them. No, they're, they're, no, they're, because there's jokes and stuff about IG, because IG has ruined, like, girls' lives, because they'll post a picture of an outfit, and, like, you can't wear it after a certain amount of time, and it's, like, it's the whole, it's whole politics, it's crazy. Uh, I was just looking over to my, our engineer, Dave Larkin, and I'm, like, (laughs) in his face, I'm, like, yes, we're guys, we don't give a damn, I swear to God. You guys live the life, honestly. Well, seriously, everyone sees me wear this performer shirt (laughs) constantly, and I gotta tell them, I'm not wearing the same shirt all the time, it's just branding, I have 12 of them, so I have one for almost two weeks in a row, I don't have to do the laundry, but, guys, it doesn't matter, I mean, seriously, it it just doesn't matter to us that much, I mean, to some guys, yeah, some guys are a little Or, let me repeat this, not on a a day-to-day, I think it's in the industry I am, Um, it matters a little bit more, but I I don't think if I was in the industry, I would care as much. Well, I mean... You do have some basics like jeans and things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. You, you may not wear the same pair of jeans, but you'll wear jeans. Yes. On a regular basis. Yeah, by by not repeating, I don't mean like I'm I throw away every article of clothing I ever wear. It's it's pretty much um, just rearranging the outfit so it's not the exact same outfit, but you do end up wearing the same clothes just differently, and people never. Okay, I mean different really accessories too, yeah, like you just boots instead of heels exactly. or something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, that's pretty important. I mean, there are probably some girls that don't know that. Mm-hmm. I mean, so teach them. You gotta educate them, I suppose. You gotta even this shirt I'm wearing today. The last time I wore this shirt was I don't know, maybe six. I don't know, like six, seven months ago. But I had shorts, and it was summer. And that, yeah, that definitely looks like a summer. Yeah, it was kind of summery, shirt. and it had shorts, and it was completely different than it is right now. And I made this into like a fall outfit. There you go. I mean, when you shop. I, okay, I don't want to get too personal with you, but <laughs> when you shop, how much time do you take? Let's say, let's say you have a Saturday afternoon. Too long. Too long. That, that's what's, it. What's Point. the average shopping trip in terms of time? <laughs> too long. Too. <laughs> we were, uh, let's just say that um, if I had a boyfriend, he probably would never want to go shopping with me. Really? So he you got to bring a lot of distractions. Like no. I'm sitting there waiting for hours upon hours. I like hours. honestly the best shopping. I like to go by myself. Um, most girls love to shop with other girls. I can't focus. It's not the same. Girls like to put their opinions on stuff, and I have my own style and my own. I don't want your opinion. I kind of want to do what I want to do. So I love going to the mall by myself. Oh, that's, mm-hmm. well, that's a good thing to do by yourself. I mean, yeah. people do have to have some time to themselves once in a while. And I can see your point, you know, because each girl has her own individual mm-hmm. taste, right? I mean. 
I, I love your style. Obviously, I've, I've, I've known you for seven years, so I'm very used to how you dress, and you always dressed impeccably, so thank uh, you, kudos thank to you. you. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you can't really push your style on somebody else, and I, I, I'm assuming more girls these days are matching their styles to their personalities. Yes. You know, and that's, that's good. So those girls that actually look like, you know, <laughs> less than... Uh, na- we'll just say nasty looking. I'm, I'm <laughs> assuming that that matches their personality to a certain degree. Uh, but, you know, um, maybe they should look in the mirror once in a while instead of taking selfies, actually look at themselves and say... <laughs> selfies. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've always been under the school of thought that you can be sexy and still be classy. I agree with that. There's and, a way to do it. And I have to say, you do that all Thank the you. time. I try you are to. sexy and classy. And you don't have to be slutty. No, it's it's really because you're you're kind of saying to the world, I this is me, folks. Uh, and I, I just think I just uh, I hate to say it. I'm maybe I'm old school, but I always like girls that present themselves in a nice manner. I, and the thing is, a lot of these girls complain that they're getting the wrong type of attention, or right. guys are not taking them seriously. And then you look at their what they're talking about on Twitter and what they're wearing on Instagram, and they wonder why these are the guys that are hitting on them and right. only want one thing. Exactly. So, yeah, I never get that. So you, you kind of get what you put out there, is basically, exactly. right, right there. And so, you know, these girls, I, I especially with social media now, with it so prevalent in in most young people's lives. You gotta say to yourself, you're you're even amplifying it even more by doing it, by putting all these posts up there and whatnot. I mean, we could probably have a whole entire hour show on that. Yeah. Not that we're going to, but I, I hope that, I hope girls uh, out there and guys too. There are some guys that you know, the the, the ones that you always. Every time I see a a, a Facebook uh, uh, avatar with the guy's shirt off, and that's oh, specific, with it's the like selfies. Oh, oh, no, that's God. a big no no, guys. Yeah, yeah exactly. Let I, me help you out there. If a you want to get a girl no. like this right here. Don't do that. No, we don't. We don't like the bathroom selfies, like fifty. If you have more selfies than I do on my Instagram, we're not gonna work out. Dave was just pointing himself. Yeah, that's what I do. I take my <laughs> shirt off. <laughs> really, Dave? <laughs> we're gonna have to mic up Dave from pretty soon. <laughs> I'm sure he could add some funny uh, 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 situations to this uh, banter that we have going on. Uh, in today's show. Um, we had uh, Danielle Ringler coming in. Uh, who was a Miss Massachusetts. Uh, pageant contestant and a, and a beautiful model, but she couldn't make it tonight. So we're gonna Ooh. have her back. Yeah, I know she's a lovable girl. She is and beautiful. So we're gonna have her back next week for next week's show uh, because she is getting ready for this Massachusetts USA, and of course it's very important to her. And uh, something came up, and she had to take care of that. Actually, it was a dress fitting. So yeah. oh, that's we, coming up soon too. I can't yeah, wait. it's gonna come up in what? A, two weeks? A week? No, two weeks. Two, two weeks. weeks yeah. yeah, two weeks from now. So actually. No, it's like 10, like 10, 10 or 11 days. Yeah, about I, I suppose weeks. you could say two weeks. Yeah. It's, it's 10 or 11 days from now. That's two days for the weekend. It's the 23rd and 24th. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to be up in Tewksbury or Lowell, someplace like that. I'll have to check the schedule. Well, we'll talk more about it next week now uh, when she comes in. But we do have your interview with Morgan Page coming up. Yes. That's going to be pretty cool. How'd you? I mean, we, we have obviously some great people coming through Boston all the time. And uh, this was an interview that we did through Dirty Water News, and you get to go up to a state, which is where he's playing, and you, get, you had a chance to talk to him. So that interview is coming up right after the commercial break. And we have Mike Constantino in for a few minutes, a little later on, to talk about his new single that's out, his video that's out on YouTube, and it's getting some really good plays, and uh, more about his music uh, in the later part of the show. So we'll be back right after this, and stay tuned. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. It's against my religion. I'm giving my dog a bath, you can have pictures of that. Pressure gives me hives. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. Hold on, let me ask my mom. Sorry, my webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. Unfortunately, I just had my clothes surgically attached to my body. If they got out, I might never be president. I'm already naked, under my clothes. Not even if you were all three Jonas Brothers. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. The more you ask, the less I want to. You're not the boss of me. Nudity makes me vomit. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. 
Interviewing the best talent Boston has to offer. This is the Performer Radio Show. And I'm here with Morgan Page, Grammy-nominated producer and DJ. Welcome to Boston. How does it feel to be here? It's great to be back. It's my old stomping grounds. I went to college here, so it's an honor to be back in Boston. That's great. And how does it feel that right now the Red Sox are playing the World Series, so it's kind of like a great time to be here? Yeah, I think it's going to be a celebratory kind of night by the by the looks of the game so far. So I know it's a big baseball town, and uh, always was when I went to college here. So uh, excited to see what happens. That's great. So tell us about tonight, your show. What could, what could we expect? Uh, I'm going to play a lot of uh, remixes, mashups, originals of mine. You know, back catalog. Just a lot of my big vocal tracks. You know, that I'm known for playing, and uh, I always throw in a few surprises here and there. So. And tell us how the tour's been going so far, and where do you where are you going next? It's been amazing. I mean, just bringing along a lot of my favorite acts. So it's Morgan Page Presents, uh, but we also have a, a 3D wall for some of the shows. So it's, some of the shows are in 3D and others are in 2D. It's 2D tonight, but uh, I have some of my favorite DJs along. Audion and Maura Levy are DJing as support acts. And, um, you know, just going along with the tour, we had a ton of sellout shows like played Best Buy Theater in New York and Philly. And we're about 30 shows into the tour now, so we're about halfway, so it's a big tour. But uh, we're taking the bus on the road, and then next up is Baltimore and a ton of other dates. So, super long tour. Uh, tell us a little bit about the show. I know that I saw the video um, that you made of the show and how creative. And did you do that yourself? Do you have a team that came up with the show? Or? Yeah, we had almost 30 animators working on this. And we had guys that did stuff for Avatar. And it was actually technology that was used. Uh, it was going to be used for Michael Jackson's tour for This Is It. He never got a chance to use it, so we were like, you know, might as well use this technology, do something with it, take it on the road. So it's a new, much more improved version of that original MJ setup. And uh, we made all the visuals custom for this. Uh, it's super immersive, crazy light show. So it's definitely worth checking out. That's great. I, I love that, that it's just, you're not just being a DJ and behind the DJ, kind of more interactive with the show and everything. So that's great. So tell us about what you have coming up next for yourself, musically, what's next? Uh, you know, working on another album for next year, and then there's a new single called Against the World with Michael S., and that's going to come out in a couple weeks. So I'll play that tonight, give people a taste of that. It's a brand new song, really excited about, and also doing a compilation called Morgan Page Presents. Yeah. And also, who would you want, if you could work with one artist and collaborate with one artist, who would that be? There's one, I think right now, either Adele or Ellie Golden. They're amazing, those are great choices. Who knows, it might just happen soon. You never know. You know, we actually emailed Adele. She got back to us, but she was busy having her kid. So <laughs> it would be really dope seeing though Adele on like an EDM track. That'd be great. So you went to school here. Tell us about your experience here in Emerson. Uh, Emerson was amazing. You know, I literally was studying in the library across the street from where I'm playing uh, right now, and uh, it was a perfect college town. You know, just to be able to have a studio here. I actually had a studio in the dorms. I had a triple with a studio in there and used to run the radio station, WERS, Emerson's radio station. So uh, that was really what got me into music, you know, getting involved with the scene here, playing uh, Phoenix Landing in Cambridge. That was my first show ever DJ. So it was a great city for house music. So you're pretty familiar with the Boston scene. So what do you think separates us from every other city you've been around? What makes Boston so different and why do you love it? I think Boston, just the collection of colleges, and especially now that, that EDM is embraced by college kids. I think when I was growing up, it was, it was pretty new, it was different. It wasn't really a big thing with, with the college market, and now it's, it's so huge. So I think Boston is more important than ever, especially for this music. So just the, having that really, that whole college base to the city is pretty unique compared to everything else. And, you know, you go to other college towns, and they're very small towns in the middle of nowhere, and it's just students. Here it's like you got the big city, and you got tons of colleges, amazing restaurants, museums, everything. Do you ever check up any spots you used to go to when you were in college while you're, while you're down here every time you come to Boston and have a show? You know, when I was here, let's see, when I was living here, I lived right near the Fens, and I, would, I could walk to Lansdowne Street, so I remember there being Avalon, and even people had, they had a studio underneath Avalon where Steve Porter and, and D, John Debo, the DJs at the time, would actually go and test their tracks out. It was really cool, but I haven't checked in lately at these places. I mean, I know obviously it's now House of Blues over there, but um, also, crazy story, I remember when House of Blues was over in Cambridge, I, did, I played a show with Nora Jones before she was famous. So she was playing like, it was like an empty room for the first, for the first hour or whatever, and no one knew who she was. And she was in a band called Wax Poetic, and it was like a year or two later she got signed to Blue Note as Nora Jones. And this was when you were going to school here? That's awesome. That's an awesome story. Any, anything other new story you have going on here? 
Any you can share with us? Any stories while you were in college? You know, I, I threw part of my studio out one of the windows on Beacon Street into a dumpster after it started smoking. So one of the one of the, my uh, one of the stereos I had, one of the amps, started smoking, and I had to throw it. I think from like the tenth floor. So. Were you always making music, or something you got into when you were in college, or you've always been making music? How did you get started? I started when I was about 12. Started really early. I just started working with the computer, saving up money for gear, and you know, just kind of got the bug for for house music, for electronic music, and kept pushing. And to s switch it up a little bit, you are nominated for a Grammys. How did that feel, getting the news? Because it's not every DJ that's getting you know nominated for Grammys. So how does that feel? What did it mean to you? Yeah, it's a huge honor. You know, it's like you only have one shot per year. You know, you submit your music, and it, it's crazy because it's like you know you only have the limited opportunity to get your music in for that time period, unless you're doing like a reissue or something or like a live set. So it's a huge honor. You know, um, I don't know if you, you know your life doesn't change drastically, but the honor nobody can take that away from you. You know. So. And going back onto the new album you said you were going to work on, is there any collabs we should expect you can tell us or what can you give us any new deets into the new album that we can know about? Well, I don't reveal, I can't reveal much because it's, it's not done yet, so, but uh, there's definitely, you know, Against the World would be one of the singles from the album and Your Love, you know, the cover of the Outfield track. Um, and there'll be some cool, familiar voices from other records, that's all I can say. Will the feel of the record be the same as your stuff prior, or are you switching it up a little bit? Are you trying new things? It might be a little poppier and a little more club focused at the same time. So a little more, yeah, a little extra edge, a little more club feel to it. So what's the craziest thing that's happened to you while you've been on tour so far? You said you've done 30 dates, correct? Well, just give us a little insight of some of the crazy things that's been happening, because every DJ I know has all these crazy things that's happening on tour. Share with us. Yeah, you know, a lot of times there's various things flying through the air. Sometimes, sometimes it's beer bottles, sometimes it's bras, sometimes it's, uh, you know, it's just a variety of things. So you kind of have to dodge these various elements coming through, whether it's a glow stick or an iPhone or whatever. And how do you feel going back into it? Because I know you're an EDM DJ. All the stuff that's been in the news lately and all the negative attention it's gotten because of all the kids and the drugs related to it and what do you have to say about that? I think you know it's up to people to make the, the choice to party responsibly. I think you can simplify things by not doing it and, and that's one reason I really wanted to do the, like the 3D show is I wanted to have an event where you really, I mean you shouldn't have to have drugs to enjoy the event but I wanted to have something where you definitely didn't need them at all. And I think that's it's cool, like you get pulled into this whole other world with this 3D space. You kind of feel high while you're doing it, and it's you don't even need to have a, you know a, a drink of alcohol at all, nothing. Yeah, I mean that's how I feel. I because kids have made it such a prominent thing for these shows to do. They kind of associate it with the with the music, and the music itself is so great. You don't really need it's that type of music that does make you feel high without actually being high. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's too bad that there's like this association, and I think when the drugs overpower the music, uh, you're in trouble. So I think, you know, it's as long as people understand that it's about the music, and it doesn't have to be this thing that's attached to it at all times. It's unfortunate that they're associating with the music and canceling so many shows. I know Boston itself, they canceled like a said show, they canceled so many EDM shows here because of it, and it's terrible for the people that actually love it and go there for the music and not for the drugs. But I'm excited to see your show tonight. Can't wait for you to kill it. And um, so what's next? What city's next? Uh, Baltimore's next. Ooh, Baltimore. That should be fun. Well, thank you for having us and go kick ass tonight. Yeah, thanks. Models, singers, comedians, dancers, and so much more. This is the Performer Radio Show. Performer Radio And we're back. And that was Morgan Page. That was a great interview. Uh, we saw him at a state, right, Mary? He was, was great. Like about two weeks ago. Yeah, I mean, guys like that. Love, love seeing them come through Boston, and uh, we hope he comes back again. In the studio right now, we have Mike Constantino. Mike, welcome. Welcome to a humble abode. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. So you've been uh, you've been in this business for a while now, haven't you? Yes, I have. I've had um, I've had some experience in the business. Um, we, we we've done a lot of local stuff, you know, which of course you know is is part one of everything. But um, we're looking to kind of you know expand our uh, our territory. So we're doing a lot of good things now. That's cool. I mean, uh, now you started out when? What year did you start out? Um, I started songwriting my sophomore year in high school, so um, 2002, and then I started performing. I did my first show in Boston, uh, 2007. 
Wow, it took you five years, huh? Just to get to get to this. Were you playing out like local clubs or high school stuff, or um, when you first started? Well, when I first started, it was just strictly writing. You know, it was writing, kind of getting my feet wet doing that, and that sort of went to recording a little bit. Uh, you know, then working with different people, and then once, yes, I actually I went to school in Boston. I went to Bay State College mm-hmm. for um, about about a year and a half. And um, that kind of got me, you know, like seeing this, this, the, the city life a little bit more, you know, wanting to do some some live stuff. And then we um, we put together like some little demo tape and gave it to some club and they were interested. So we went out there and did a performance. And I say we now, would you were you doing this on your own at that time or did back, you get a partner or? Yeah, back then I had some friends who did it. Um, a couple guys, you know, we, we did it together. So, but now, now I'm just solo act. So you guys were a group. Yeah, no, no boy band. No boy band. That's just so, what I was okay, gonna say. Now you have to elaborate. If you're not a boy band, I knew she was band, gonna come up with that first. What, I just had a feeling. What kind of group she are we talking bands. about here? <laughs> well, I guess yeah. I'll give you the history. So when when I first started writing music, I mean, I was influenced with so many different types of music growing up. So I had like my punk rock stage when I was like in middle school. Then I had like the I went through like a Beatles stage, um, like Led Zeppelin, you know, like a rock stage. And then I started. I got introduced to hip hop. You know, uh, my first my first hip hop album was Obi Trice Cheers, and um, DMX. It's dark and hell is hot, and actually, I think I stole them from my sister. <laughs> that my, is hilarious. My mother was horrified, horrified. She was like, "You can't listen to that." Horrified stuff. that you stole it from your sister, or you just listen. Well, to no, the music? fact, yeah, the fact that I was listening to the music, yeah, and, and I was like, oh "My God, this is awesome." Okay, wait, she was horrified that you were listening to the music, but not horrified your sister was listening to I it. Know. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, like, I, I don't it's know. It's usually the opposite, usually. <laughs> True. Okay, go ahead. I uh, was I was the baby of the family, so. Uh, Maybe, oh, okay. You know, maybe she was trying to protect me from from the rest from of the DMX. world. Yeah, that's a lot yeah. of swearing. <laughs> DMX. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. A lot but of I thought it was awesome. I was like, this is so cool. Well, you're at that that rebel, rebellious stage. Oh, so absolutely. Why, why not? I mean, that, that makes sense to me. Sure. Yeah. So that inspired you to want to be an MC for hip hop, or how did you segue into what I would consider now pop music? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I. I I guess around that time when I when I first was introduced to hip hop, that's when I started writing. And like just like you said, you know, I was um, you know typical, you know, misguided, you know, high school student. You know, didn't really, you know, just was trying to figure myself out. So right. hearing the music, you know, getting lost in the music was all kind of therapy for me. And then I started, you know, just writing stuff down, and it was it was kind of emulating what I was listening to at the time. So hip hop was kind of the the standard so it was kind of coming out as rap um before that though i sang i used to sing you know a lot of like i had like my in sync days which <laughs> i know you're gonna like I that one. she likes I that a lot oh uh, yeah yeah my mother still has a tape that i made singing like backstreet boys and in sync and stuff so i i sang at a younger age i even went to i went to a private school you should have brought the tape <laughs> <laughs> oh she oh she has it. No, she, you call her right now, she'll bring it down here. That's awesome. No, she, she will. Give her Legit. give her your number, she'll call it tomorrow. Oh, she will. <laughs> she'll run it down here. I can see why your mother probably was alarmed because you went from NSYNC to DMX. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's quite the <laughs> That's quite the jump yeah. when you think about it. Yeah. Well, I mean at that age I can understand, you know. Fourteen or fifteen <laughs> you're listening to NSYNC and the next thing you know, DMX comes in. Oh. Right, that makes oh. sense. It makes perfect sense to so me. So is the group itself more pop or more hip hop? Yeah, that's a good question. No, these th- when I I linked up with these guys. It was straight up and down hip hop. Oh, these, wow. these so dudes. so you were the singer, like the person who did the hooks. I did, I did, yes. Oh, okay. Choruses. Oh, so you didn't do any MCing? No, I did though. Oh, you did that. You did both. I'm versatile, yeah. Because ah, and that's that's go. what's cool, kind of about like my my history is like you know my my brother who's a big supporter of mine too, but he always challenges me. So he's always like you know, you got to find yourself. You know who do you, who do you want to be? Do you want to be a singer? Do you want to be a rapper? And it's like you can't really force that. You kind of just have to let it be. So mm-hmm. I think I've embraced both of those. You know styles of music, kind of like you know Drake, but you I was know. Just gonna say that. That's so funny. Yeah, and his singing, yeah, my singing and his are similar. You know, but when he starts the rap and he gets a little more, you know, urban esque, you know, if you will, and and mine is a little more suburban esque. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's yeah. I that's mean, pretty much that. Right. Pretty- a little more Macklemore ish or something. You know. I like Macklemore. When you guys were together as a group, did you play out? I should ask that question. Uh, no. Wait, say that you, again. I'm sorry. Well, when you guys were together as a group, yeah. did you play out? Because you said you, until 2007 you didn't play out. So what did you guys do as a group? I mean, did you just lay down tracks? or? Well, I met them I met them when I moved to the city. So that, that was, I actually moved to Boston late of 2006 after I graduated high school. 
So there was only about a year in between that time. Oh, okay, okay. So I never did any gigs in, in, in high school. I was just writing in kind of. Okay, so you so you weren't part of a group in high school? No, no. Okay. High school was just, yeah, me just writing. Actually, it's funny. I, I thought about this on the way over here. I had um, I had this big, like, green duffel bag, right? This huge bag that I used to take on vacations with me, you know, when I'd go to Florida and stuff with my family on trips or whatever. And over the years of writing in high school, I filled up notebooks, you know, with, with raps, typically. And I filled this huge duffel bag up completely with notebooks from from start to finish and i actually a couple years ago I all went lyrics dirt, all note, lyrics all lyric, yeah, yeah you're talking like maybe a hundred notebooks just covered like it was when i started going through this stuff it was crazy i was like i wrote that much like i just i would just get lost in it and i always i think that's what kind of really just developed my love you know for making music i'm just I, you, you start I start hearing music you know whether it's mine or somebody else's and I just I mean preferably somebody else's actually I don't even like my own music which is I guess, <laughs> that's interesting cliche but I'm hey just, folks just, buy my record I don't like it but maybe you will record, it's but great maybe you will. yeah I hate it but yeah you'll love it just trust me right uh, well, I mean I, I think that's not abnormal you know like who's uh, an example um What's his face? Why well, is it that you're not uh, like you think you could do better? Is that what you're saying from a from a artistic perspective? I think that's a big part of it. Yeah. I think I'm always critiquing it versus enjoying it. Right. Okay. So, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Most artists are, you know, they do feel like, oh, I could do better. Just give me ten more hours in the studio. <laughs> you know, just give I, me ten more hours in that one part. Yeah. Right. Let me exactly. Just sing that one piece. Give me, give me ten more hours for that one hook. You know, I, I, oh, it happens. Every, every, yeah, I know. I mean, and to people, the average person, it sounds great. Like I have tons right, of exactly. friends who are artists, and I'm like, but that came out so dope. And they're well, like, I, I could do so much better. I now. get the <laughs> same thing as a photographer. I'll take some great pictures, and then the person like, oh, I could do better. I was like, trust me, I'm a photographer. I know what I'm looking at is really great right now. But yeah, people do critique themselves a lot, especially the ones that are very artistic. That's pretty common. Mm, so I, I can sure. understand where you're coming from. I just don't want people to think you actually hate your own music. Yes, you I know? don't. I don't hate my own music. That, I didn't think so. No, but I, I mean that the strike Striving for per perfection is, is something that you should have as an artist. You know, you want to make as, as best of, of a piece of art as you can. There's always room to grow. Yeah, exactly. Unless so. you're Kanye. Apparently, he's perfect. Well, so. Kanye aside. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I would I'd love, to, to, I'd love to be the, right? I'd love to be the day. I'd love to be there the day Kanye meets God yeah. and see what God has to say about that. But well, I think the, he'll be looking in the mirror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what he thinks every morning when he yeah. wakes up. Yes, I am yeah. God. Jesus. Thank you very Jesus. much. Jesus I, it is. I Did you know he has a, a hologram Jesus in his tour right now? Of course. That is terrible. In which, in which he yells at Jesus himself, kind of. And it's just terrible. He has like, monologues I, with Jesus? No, he has uh. holograms like of Jesus being on stage with him. And it's it's really weird. I don't know. I was oh, reading we, reviews. We could do a I gotta step hour. up. I gotta step up my live show then, huh? <laughs> we could do a whole hour. <laughs> Kanye he West, has Jesus we? in his set. Who do you have? <laughs> let's I got some. I got some go-go dancers. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Let's quickly talk, talk about your new EP that's coming out. You, you've been working on this for how long now? Um. Well, kind of the start of this year, the start of 2013. I made a lot of changes. Not to get off track, but. I basically just, I did a lot of kind of soul searching. I went through some, you know, stages in my life and just changing a lot of things to, you know, strictly dedicate myself to music, you know. Emery and I just kind of talked about this a little bit too. It's, you know, when you're an artist and you and you, and you you want to be a successful artist, it's not, it's not a halfway thing. You know, you really have to give it your all. And I've, right. it took me, you know, over, you know, all the years of, you know, doing this and doing the gigs, you know, and doing the boy bands or the rap groups. I mean, I did a lot of stuff wrong because I, I didn't know how to do it right. So I think, you know, we make these or these these things happen and you make these mistakes that are just going to it's going to teach you. Mm -hmm. And between last year and this year, it just I absorbed it all. I just like everything that I did, you know, all the past mistakes, or et cetera. Or I just I really got it. Something clicked. So to me, it was and then but with that something clicking, it was kind of like I really put the microscope under myself, you know, under my talents, you know, and how I'm doing things. And I just I wanted to make myself better. You know, I wanted to do everything the right way. You know, so with that said, um, you know, I linked up with some good. Um, we, we got a this director I'm working with. His name is J.R. Saint. Um, he does a lot of videos like for the game, like Little Wayne and stuff. He's very, very good at what he does. Mm -hmm. We just shot um, the video for my brand new single, which is called One For Me, which we just released least on October 7th so you can check out the video um, on YouTube of course um, and yeah so that's that's the first single but yes the EP we were going back and forth on names I'm still recording the singles for it. it's gonna be five songs 
Um, I yeah, would, but you brought two of them for us tonight, didn't you? Yeah. Including well, including the the single you just mentioned. Yeah, there's one I actually mm-hmm. haven't even released yet that we're gonna we're, we're gonna, gonna we're debut gonna, it right here. We're gonna on the give former a radio show. We're gonna preview. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Thanks for thinking of us. Yeah, you know oh, what? I really appreciate that. Well, we really favor. appreciate. It. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Amory. I appreciate it more than you though. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so, what's the name of that single that we're gonna be? Talking. So yeah, the one for me is a debut single, and then the single that we're gonna preview is uh, it's called "Quite Some Time." Quite some time. And what's the story behind this song? <laughs> that's, that's, if it's a long story, we'll wait till after the song. What I'm was no. the inspiration? We'll, we'll, we'll wait. We'll wait. Let's, let's let's listen to it, and then we'll probably know a little bit more after we listen to it. All right, we're gonna play that song right now. Wanna fight about the past, not really what you wanna do Tell you right now, this is a game you gon' lose You know about me, I know about you We got a lot of history, there's things we've been through I'm trying to move on, I'm trying to get ahead But I can't get it, you girl, that in my head It's what I'm trying to tell you, that's what I'm trying to say I took your love for granted and I push, push you away Now I see things like now Never be full, like the feeling I would get when you walked inside the door. Why, why, why did I do this? What was it all for? I struggle with these doubts and it hurts much more. I lost my life. I lost my life. I lost my wife. I lost my wife. A horse without a carriage, a hen without a ring A queen without a king, girl, this ain't a good thing girl. Wanna fight about the past, or really what you wanna do I tell you right now, this is a game you gon' lose You know about me, I know about you We got a lot of history, there's things we've been through Yeah, we were together for quite, quite And we were in love for quite, quite But we haven't talked in quite Plus we haven't seen each other in quite I used to tell you you the one You and me against the world Alone and having fun Girl I don't like who we become I, I wish I could erase all the things that I've done That's just not how it works Though we had a good run No missed calls Not a single text I shrug it off But I really am a mess Can't, can't, can't go to sleep Can't rest because of stress Or me because your head's no longer rested on my chest I lost my life I lost my life I lost my wife I lost my wife A horse without a carriage A hen without a ring A queen without a king Girl, this ain't a good thing girl. Wanna fight about the past Or really what you wanna do Tell you right now This is a game you gon' lose You know about me I know about you We got a lot of history The things we've been through Yeah, we were together for Quite, quite And we were in love for Internet destination on the planet for new music. New music. New, new, new music. For former radio is in the mix 24 7. That was a great song, Mike. I really like that. Thank you. Now, obviously, after listening to that, we have to assume that maybe this happened to you or it was inspired by your life. I don't know. You don't know? <laughs> no, it's. I mean, that's where most artists get their inspiration yes. from their life. Um, but you know, I, I'm assuming that you know you can write about other things too. But was it real life events? I guess that's what he's trying to get at. Yeah, you don't have to get into <laughs> your personal stuff, but I mean, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to lie to you guys. So, uh, yes, it was from personal experience. Okay. I was a girl I dated for almost four years. Wow. Okay. We, we, were, we were pretty close. Uh, well, actually, we were very close. Um, and that was kind of, you know, my transformation. So, you know, in, in just really focusing, you know, on my music, you know, it's, it's really hard to have distractions, you know, and if you're, you know, you're young and you're in love and it might not be the right person, then it's just, it's really difficult to kind of keep that relationship together. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's what young love is supposed to be like. You're supposed to feel people out, not literally, but <laughs> I, I, you're supposed to, you know, learn what you want and what you need out of life. Okay, and exactly. I'm assuming that that was a big coping uh, mechanism for you to write a song like that to to deal with the situation. Is that kind of correct? Or um, because you mentioned before that you, you you wrote a lot to, you know, get your thoughts and feelings out and kind of figure things out that way. Yeah, that's that's a hundred percent accurate. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a pretty interesting time, you know, after we broke up. Because to me, it's I, I wasn't really. I wasn't really prepared for it. You know, I thought, yeah, you know, that's, you know, hey, uh, you know, because I, I was actually the one who broke it off um, kind of unexpectedly. And I didn't really realize, you know, like the, the whole attachment thing. And I, she, this was the longest I'd ever been in a relationship. So, mm -hmm. you know, I had, you know, a couple of girlfriends in the past, but they were just, you know, a, a year maybe tops. But, you know, something like four years is, that's, oh, it's a that's pretty, a I, I think it's mm -hmm. safe to say that's the first time you were really in love. Yeah. 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 yeah so that, that, that's, you can see the difference between mm -hmm. that and just a, you know, casual fling. Yeah. You know, you know okay, yeah. even half a year, a year, that's still kind of casual when you think about it. But four years, that's some serious commitment right there. And yeah, that does hurt. I mean, everyone's been through it at some point in their lives. But right? on the other side, how does the girl feel about the song? And do you think she's have you gotten feedback any from her? Have you heard, from she heard it? Well, she, hasn't, she might not have heard well, it yet. Well, when this actually, when we were when we first broke up, I started, you know, I, I was writing a lot. And yes, you know, when in the beginning, it, I was like, okay, I kind of played it off. You know, I was going out just, you know, doing the, you know, what guys do after they, yeah, you they, know, break up with a chick. You know, they've done with it for a long time. and They make it look like they don't care. But yeah, they care. They but care. then eventually it catches up with you, and it did. And I, I, even, I even attempted to somewhat repair the situation, but I think the damage was already done. And you know it's 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 for the better, but yeah. So it, she actually she's heard it. She heard the song. She did, okay. and she actually really liked it. But um, that's interesting. Yeah, because I mean it's not. Eh. You know, it's like I, I'm not trying to, you know, bash. You know, you didn't, you didn't Taylor Swift her. I like did, she did all her. Actions. I didn't Taylor Swift her. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that sad no. that that's actually a thing now? <laughs> Taylor Swift her. Yeah, I might they have, get mad. They she, get. she actually might have told me that we were never ever getting back together. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, she, she Taylor Swift she you. Swift you. She yeah, exactly. yeah, she Taylor that's Swift kicked terrible. me. <laughs> Whatever, man. It is what it is. Because I, I always you know. wondered that about you know songwriters if. Every we time, know. like, are, are, are we scared? Am I going to be scared dating a songwriter that if things go yes, wrong, they're going to write it all over point. everywhere? Like Taylor Swift, actually, she's made multi-million platinum I albums on doing this. I don't think too dating many people are calling her at this point. In time. Yeah, hey, you she's date? written about everybody. I so know. how do you feel about that songwriter? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what what well, can you, I say? You, you kind of did something like that, but not yeah. in a, not in a malicious way. Yeah. I exactly. guess my question yeah. is: Do you write about um, your when it comes to your relationships? Is that something that you always put into your music? I mean, yes and no. And, and like I said too, I was never really involved in in many relationships. You know, like long term relationships. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't really. Um, it wasn't really relevant in the past, you know, given yes, I've always talked to kind of about what's on my mind and this is, this is right here what we're talking about is the biggest, you know, point in an artist's life when they start taking, you know, what actually happens to them and of course in, in, in a respectful manner, you know, but really just taking the truth. And, and using it and accepting it and not being, you know, afraid to have to sugarcoat something or, you know, change it so it's a way that you think is appealing. Because a lot of times it's actually the way that how it really went down that to you kind of sucks. You know, you're like, oh, that 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 situation or it really didn't work out the way that I wanted it to. And I would rather tell it in a way that I think people would want to hear it. But don't do that because when you just when you're real people respond to that because they've been through the same stuff yeah. fans love that they know they know the difference between a fake record and a real record and I, those do the best 
I think every breakup. You know, you're album absolutely has right. I, did you know that love songs or you know romantic ballads, whatever you want to call it, they're the longing, the longest lasting songs in mm-hmm. terms of popularity. How they stick around? Yeah, yeah. they stick around. It's, it's if something connects you on an emotional level, and it, it works it, it, every it, time. Taylor you know, Swift little, album, even the Usher Confessions album. I'm going way back. I mean, when you yeah. hear wedding songs these days, people still pick songs that were made. 20, 30 years mm-hmm. ago because they have some kind of emotional connection to Yeah, them. they're it's like true. classic. You know, and I'll tell you something right now. If you write a number one or number one hit love song, that'll last a long time as far as money in your pocket. Um, I know the guys from Extreme. They wrote a song, a ballad called More Than Words. This was back in the early 90s. Okay, they're still making bank off that song. Why? Because it keeps getting played over and over and over People again. People can always relate Love to never it. goes out of style. Never no matter goes out of style. What, no matter what you say, love never goes out of style. Oh, marriage sorry. may go out of style. Who knows? But love never uh, goes marriage, out of style. Yeah. I think uh, marriage is out of style. At this point. Uh, maybe, maybe <laughs> not. I mean, it depends on your perspective, I suppose. No, I mean, course. things have changed. Uh, te- you know, technology, relationships, uh, everything has changed. But love still there. It's a basic human emotion. That's why when people, anger, love, all those emotions, people connect to sometimes. Everyone gets angry, everyone gets sad, everyone loves. And when you write songs that are based on human emotion like that, it resonates with people. Absolutely. You know, and that, that is, that's good. That's a sign of a true songwriter. Right there. Mm-hmm. You know, you can write about dancing booties in the club, mm-hmm. all this stuff, popping bottles, whatever. That stuff will be popular fairly for it, fairly, it, but, but it, it goes, goes away. away. It away. Exactly. People won't remember it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's fun for the time being. How many times have you been sitting, listening to the radio, and all of a sudden an, an old song comes up, maybe even four or five years, and you completely forgot that song? Okay, it's like, oh, I forgot that song. That was my jam back in the day, whatever. Uh, but a love song comes up, it, that does, you just know right away. Hey, I That's how that you song. got something. You got something. You literally, know? literally tonight when I was leaving the gym before I came here, I um, I started just thinking a little bit. And as as an artist, you know, as a songwriter too, like, I mean, given everyone's thoughts can sometimes be obscure, sure. But I tend to just distance off into, like, the, Paradise Island sometimes, you know, like if I'm writing a, writing music or even just sometimes in general. So anyways, but I just, um, I started reminiscing and thinking about this, this like girl that I knew a long time ago. Like not even, it wasn't like really just too caught up in it, but I just, it kind of hit my mind. And there was a song that I used to, um, like that we would sometimes play when we were hanging out. We both liked the song or whatever. And so I just YouTubed it and I put it on. I was just like, I was belting it out. Like, and just like you said, just that, that connection you make, you know, with those, it was just, it was actually, I'll, I'll even tell you the song. It was on the band Simple Plan. I love Simple Plan. The, the, the song Perfect. A great song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, even now I was listening to the, to the words Still more. Still a great song. No. I was listening to the words more like, you know, cause given this was when I was in, in high school, I was like, the thing about freshman. music is people, it's so much associated with memories that you can, I have songs that remind me of certain stuff that like even bring me back to like a bad place that like, you know how bad memories can kill a song for you. They said, ah, oh, I love yeah. that song, but it reminds me of this, or you have a song that reminds you of a great time. It's great that you can, music yeah, can do that for you. Most people don't realize mm-hmm. how much of an impact music has in their lives. Yeah. You know, it's no, like, like you said, it, it. there could be a song playing on the radio. You may not be aware of it at that time. But then you play something back in your head, it's like that. It's like, yeah, that was there when I was yeah. there. And then I hate to say it, but women remember that more than men. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. You see, now I'm gonna go home and YouTube Simple Plan Perfect you because that song is awesome. I couldn't, I couldn't even find like the um, the actual like it was like a live version, but it was still pretty good though. Yeah, it was still cool. I'm pretty sure it's still on my iPod somewhere. <sighs> you got see if you, you get an yeah. iPod. If still? You get like that. Yeah. You get that. Joint, I touch. Like an I MP3, meant. I touch. What's well, still the same thing? Yeah. Oh, wait, most people use their phones nowadays. That's what I'm saying. Oh no, no. Yeah, isn't that real? The, the iPod's gone out of style. iPod yeah. is no longer the the, 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 the the technology. Well, they're kind of for kids. But then again, I'm even kids now. I touch. Have what? IPhones. I touch is my life. I don't want music on my phone. It's too much. It's too well, I, I'll admit it rings a battery. Well, it's see, a different you you have a point there. But I think nowadays just everybody wants one device. But yes, you're right. I need all the space. I can get for my selfies. <laughs> <He probably does. laughs> Just does. like a closet. <laughs> like closet. Right, right. <laughs> we got that, what, 124 gigabyte? <laughs> probably. I'm touch. getting picked on because I'm the, the only girl here. It's are, not are fair. Sure I have no not, backup. I have sure no backup. This is true. Are you sure it's not filled with Instagram pictures? <laughs> she needs that new oh, Nikon. No, no, no uh, selfies, selfies, she needs, selfies. She needs that new, uh, what is it, the Nokia phone? It's got like a 17 megapixel camera. Yes, exactly. It's got an adjustable lens. <laughs> selfies and 17 megapixels. Oh, yeah. That's what we need. She's snapping selfies in 1080p. Huh? Mar- Amory is really good. 
when it comes to Instagram. No, but I'm, but I'm but, but, but she always is taking selfies. She has like selfie photo shoots. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll only not if one, I really like it. It's like 15. <laughs> <laughs> she can't have just one. It's like Lay's potato chips. Because you pick the no. best one out of that 15. Right the lighting is not right. She's she just got to work it. You exactly. Know? Everything's got to be right. Hey. Mike gets me. No, no, I, I get her. I, I mean, do the I, same thing. As a I photographer, get it. you have to... <laughs> There you you have to do that. And Speaking of which, technology. <laughs> technology has changed. How do you think technology is impacting you as a songwriter? There we go. It's a good segue, huh? I like that. that yeah, that you you smoothed right into that. Yes, one. I did. Um, well, it's it's beneficial. It's changed the game for sure. You know, as as far as sales go, you know, people nowadays think they can you know write a cool song with a cool beat, make a video, throw it on YouTube, and then you're gonna be Justin Bieber. But it doesn't work like that. Do you have those resources where something like that could happen? Do we have that nowadays? Absolutely. And that's very, it's its very advantageous, you know, to, to artists, you know, I mean, to not have to go through a label to shoot a video and just put it on YouTube. I mean, we got, you know, over 20,000 hits, 20,000 views on the one for me, the, the new single that I just 27, dropped. 27,000 at last check. I, th- I checked the today. Yeah, and then those, that's the thing. Those are real views. You know, yeah. people nowadays, and you, you can go buy views and, you know, pay a robot right, or have true. your cousin oh, yeah. refresh the page and There's get all no these buddies. Point. I never get that. There's no point in that. Like, oh, no, there is no point. You're not absolutely generating right. fans or people who are actually seeing it. It's like it's kind just, of yeah. just a number there. Well, the thing is, is, you know, the way that they see it is, you know, the higher number of views they have, let's say a label came across mm. it, like an A&R, they're going to yeah. see that and be like, oh my God, but these labels and these A&Rs know that that they're actually, that. they right. know that exactly. this stuff happens. So you're going to go spend, you know, a and thousand And you want to know bucks. why they know that? Because they've been doing it themselves. Yep, they do do it themselves. They got caught. The actually, industry. they got caught last no, year. No, it's true. They, 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 they very much got caught. I mean, but aside from that, I, I feel like YouTube is a great outlet. It's a lot of artists have gotten... Notice Absolutely. all that that would never ever well, get Well, YouTube became YouTube. Uh, YouTube is phenomenal. It YouTube is. became I love MTV. YouTube. Yeah. YouTube became MTV. It did. That's basically yeah, what happened. Right. MTV is off in their own little tangent and reality world, if you want to call it that. And YouTube has taken over where MTV mm-hmm. has failed in the past ten yeah. years. Okay, and it's good because it allowed artists like yourselves to have a platform to show their work to the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. Whereas MTV was very selective, you have to go through this process. But now you guys have this open forum, and and uh, people have been discovered through YouTube. Look at Carmen from Boston, great yeah. example. Yeah. yeah, great example. If they hadn't had their YouTube channel up and did that one particular video, nobody would know who they are, and Boston they wouldn't have. Rhymes. I'm but telling you, cool. that Busta Rhymes never sounded so good, in my opinion. But I mean, yeah, she she I, rocked it. Man. She, I, I, she I, the first time I saw that video, I was like, "You've got to be kidding me!" How many takes mm. did they do? I don't care how many takes they did. She rocked, she it. rocked it. She definitely rocked it. And kudos to them because, damn, that really was amazing. Or even your own Justin Bieber. I mean, that's he's was it Justin YouTube Bieber. I, I tend to believe was no. more. Pe- I think it was all planned. No. Uh, I mean, yes. I used to no. I used yes. to see his videos when he was little playing Come the guitar. On, Amy. I don't know. My there's always there's always more than meets the eye. I think so. I mean, I, is, I don't think so in Carmen's case. Too, is, is I don't the, think so in Carmen's case, but yeah. Justin no, Bieber's Carmen case. Really, yeah. Come on, how many 13 year olds can come up with a master plan like that? I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, well, I mean, I guess well they say that Usher found him. Yeah. Usher, Usher did so. find him. Usher might have found him before that. That's basically what I'm thinking. I think that was all. No, I, I agree that they um, found him on YouTube and then kind of told him to keep going and grow it bigger. But I think that the whole YouTube thing, like it was Maybe. his mom's like, I literally put a. YouTube yeah, up. I mean, that's that's yeah. definitely possible. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, cute kid, everything else like that. Speaking of videos now, let's uh, set this up. We're actually going to show the video for people watching on video. And we're going to play this track. This is the current single. Uh, why don't you introduce this? Yes, so this is like my first, like, real, I guess, single, if you will. Uh, we put a lot of, you know, time and effort into this. Uh, the song is called One From Me, and the video and single, which you can, you can buy the single on iTunes or download it from iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and, um, yeah, check check out the video. It's pretty, it's All right, pretty cool. All we're going to play that video right now. Let's check it out. I've been looking for a girl like you And now that I found you I know exactly what I want to do I said, hey, how you doing? And isn't it a beautiful day? Girl, you came with your friends and they're calling your name But I can't let you walk away Where have you been my whole life? My whole life I've been searching and searching All this time 
baby, you weren't easy to find She got me singing, ay, ay, ay She got me thinking, my, oh, my The second she walked by The one for me I've been dreaming Dreaming of a girl like you And now that I see you That dream is finally coming true I said, hey, girl, you're perfect There's really nothing more I can say So let's get lost in the sand while the sun sets And watch the ocean waves drift away Where have you been my whole life? My whole life I've been searching and searching all this time But baby you weren't easy to find She got me singing I, I, I She got me thinking my, oh my The second she walked by She was the one for me Internet's number one destination for new music. Performer Radio is in the house. Performer Radio is in the house. That was a great video. I, that very that reminds me of summer. Obviously, I, mean, I know it's fall right now, but obviously yeah. the beach scenes and everything. Where did you shoot that? Uh, we shot it at Hampton Beach. Hampton, Hampton Beach. Beach. Hampton I'm very Beach. familiar with Hampton Beach. Yeah, yeah, I think we all are. Right? That's where you live in the summertime, huh, Marie? Yeah, yeah. I miss yeah. summer. It's cold out there, especially. I'm cold right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. A, it, I'll tell you. Two months from now, you're gonna be wishing you had nights like this. Trust me. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. Well, hey, you know, this is New England, and what can you do? Yeah. I, a summertime vibe like that. I mean, a lot of people, again, we we're talking about emotions earlier. You know, I mean, summer love, all this stuff. I mean, that's pretty much what you're kind of, you know, uh, hooking up and whatnot. Where'd you get the models, by the way? They look pretty good, especially the blonde. Yeah, <laughs> Sorry. yeah. Well, they're they're all cute. The, yeah. the blonde, yeah, she's she's a uh, she's a fan favorite. Yeah, I can but imagine. Yeah, um, just what I've kind of you know what I'll do nowadays is I'll reach out to photographers. We do like casting events and stuff. So mm-hmm. they're just you know all models. They do a lot of promo stuff. So we, we linked up with them, and they're all really they're they're very fun to work with. That's, That's smart. Cool. Reaching out to photographers, supposed to like going to try to get girls because photographers don't know all the pretty girls. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Look Honestly, at, look, I get this one. It's the right best here. way to do it. So <laughs> I definitely want some royalties now for everyone who takes my ideas. Uh-huh. <laughs> no, it's, it's extremely effective because you know even mm-hmm. like doing what I do. You know, I've reached out to, you know, some some females or models, you know, myself directly. And sometimes they respond. That's cool. You know, they say, yeah, you know, give me some more information. But a lot of times you just, you don't get a response. Right. Well, and Because people uh, don't know you. And also, even if you do, it's really, even if you find a pretty girl on Facebook to say yes, doesn't mean she's going to do well on camera, at least with a, a model or even or look somebody, pretty on camera. Or look pretty on camera. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Absolutely. With photographers, they work with models who already are familiar with being in front of the camera. They look good on camera and... 
just kind of works. Yeah, that's it's a, a, that's a, that's a, that's a that's brilliant. That's, that's a great. That's a great plan. Yeah, no, you're well, right. Well, who knows, Amory? Maybe you'll be pretty enough to be in his next video. <laughs> it was at Hampton Beach. Let me know. I hey. could have like literally been there like ten minutes. Speaking of which, we're actually we're going to Miami um, the Ooh. first weekend of December to shoot my next video, awesome. which which I'm very excited about. This one. This, that is awesome. Yeah, the the content on this next single, which we can I guess hit that for a second too. Uh, the, sure. Which will be my next single. So one for me is the first one. And then uh, the second one is Rescue You. Cool. So it's the, the content. My, my writing has really matured, um, especially in the past, you know, six months to a year. I've really just got, I've put much more thought and much more time into what it is that I'm writing about. You know, before I'm choosing the beats, I was saying, oh, this is a really cool beat. You know, it's a club beat. So let's, you know, because as an artist, you pick, you know, certain instrumentals. Of course, unless you're in a band, you guys will play them. But, you know, I, I'm just a vocalist. So I'll, you know, I work with different producers. We choose, you know, a certain sound that we want. And then before I know it, sometimes I can be stuck in a theme that's kind of restricting what I can write about, you know, which is sometimes cool. But, you know, it's when you kind of have an idea going into it you can be more selective of the actual music yourself so you can really emulate what you had in mind originally so this this next one is, is it a party song because no. if you really because no. if somebody says the yeah. setting is miami i think <laughs> I was gonna say party that's song. a party town yeah. no, my and i'm looking forward to it too i could use a vacation but a couple <laughs> days in the sun but now the song is called rescue you it's actually you might like this it's about it's about you know just a hard-working female who is, you know, like my age, you know, 25, which, and this is also coming from personal, you know, experience, you know, seeing. Hardworking female. That's yeah, right. seeing. You know what, she really is. Because nowadays, you know, a lot of girls, I mean, and, and women, you know, it's, things have kind of changed, you know, it's like, in the past, everybody, you know, got in love and blah, 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 was all good, but like, I mean, I don't know, this world seems like nowadays people are just, they're focused on, you know, making money and, and doing what they need to do, and that and that's great, you know, but it's. You know, you'll see you know, a woman who's got, you know, three or four different jobs. You know, she works at the club at nights. She works, you know, she goes to school during the day. She might have, you know, a job during the daytime on the other days where she doesn't have school, you know, and she, or maybe she has a child or maybe two kids. Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of these, you know, these, these women who, who work their butts off and they're, you know, it's, it's tough for them to just kind of, you know, just live. And I just kind of shed a, a lot of light and kind of hit this story that basically... It's this this girl, you know, beautiful girl, beautiful smile, and the actress fits that perfectly. And she just she just works, you know. She's she's stressed out. She wants a break. She deserves a break. And the whole rescue you thing is, I come along, and not not as like this this arrogant, you know, rich guy, because I'm not. <laughs> I'm an independent artist. We're not, we're not there yet, <laughs> you know. But it's just this this guy who, I mean, I I play the part because given it's it's my song, but I come along and just like you know what, like let's. You want to go on a vacation? Like I'm gonna pay for it. So you're the white knight. Yeah, I'm the white knight. You know, I'm I'm the uh, the, the prince charming. <laughs> you know, but what's cool about the video is, you know, because you would think, all right, well, you know, I'm gonna be sitting there with her, you know, making her drinks and like pampering this girl. But that's not it. That's not what it's about. It's not about me. It's about her. So she's, you know, she walks into, uh, like, you know, she walks into the hotel room, and she just, she just drops her belongings like you know falls into this king size bed like you know just little things like that because she just she deserved a break and now she's finally getting it and and i kind of facilitated helping that out so well that sounds like great. a great video we're gonna mm -hmm. definitely look forward yeah, to that it's one it's gonna be cool mike where can they find you online uh constantinomusic.com is my official website you can basically find everything from there um every everything is pretty much constantino music whether it's facebook uh twitter instagram vine that's good. Do you, do you post a lot of vines? Please tell me you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not like this one, right? <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I don't do vines. Well, you used to. You used I like to. vines. I have like you literally used to. like 10 vines. You know what, though? <laughs> vine is cool, I'm and vine. I'm with the vine, but the whole seven seconds thing. Like Instagram yeah. video. Instagram is better. I got it. I hate Instagram video. Ah, uh, come on. Hater. There's a, there's Hater. a different. Yes. Keep it in vine. Keep it in vine. That's all I I, 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 vine is short and sweet. I do like vine. Yeah. Michael, yes. thank uh, you so much for dropping by tonight. And uh, we, we hope that next time you can come and show that other video for us. And, uh, I would love keep, to keep in touch with us and let us know what's going on with you touring and everything else like that, uh, playing out and whatnot in the Boston area. Good we'll luck do. in Miami. Bring us some yeah, sun. Yeah, absolutely. We'll be jealous of you definitely at that yes. point. Uh, next week we're gonna definitely have Danielle back, or not back, but she'll begin next week. Danielle Ringler. Uh, obviously, she couldn't make it tonight, but we we hope to see her back in that chair next week. And uh, we've got a lot of good stuff coming up. We got Thanksgiving coming up soon, and the Miss America food. Uh, food. 
<laughs> the last thing I need is food, girl. Okay. I'm excited <laughs> to eat. I'm but, going to Miami the week after, so uh, I, need, I need to stay away yeah. from all that That's stuffing. Damn. Well, listen. Thanks everyone for tuning yeah. in uh, to the Performer Radio Show, and we got our engineer Dave Larkin over there. We want to say thanks to him too, and we'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye. This, this, this is the place for the best in new music on the planet. Performer Radio. All day, every day. All day, every day. Ranger Station, Ranger speaking. Hi. I'd like to report a bear hug. Uh, okay. Well, before I left my campsite, I was putting out my fire, and out of nowhere, Smoky Bear showed up and hugged me? So you drowned the fire, you stirred it, drowned it again, and felt that it was cold? Uh Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. He likes it when people correctly put out their campfires. He's pretty big on wildfire prevention. He's just letting you know you did good. With a, uh, hug. He's a hugger. I just got a bear hug from Smokey Bear. <laughs> Status update! All right, I'm gonna let you go now. I've got, uh, a lot of, uh, ranger stuff to do. There are many ways to start a fire, but one sure way to put it out. Learn how you can do your part at SmokeyBear.com. Only you can prevent wildfires.